So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology, why you should buy the iPhone 13 Pro now. So we are in February of 2023, the Galaxy S23 series has just about launched, comes out next week, available for purchase, but Apple has just announced the 14 Pros, it's about five or six months ago, and the 13 Pro is something I keep recommending and I want to tell you why now is even a good time to get it as well. And it's because of a few reasons. We're going to talk about it here today. But the iPhone 13 Pro is still just about a similar phone. But the thing is, is that you come here in September, it might not be as impressive then when we have maybe an ultra phone or something like that that comes to the market. So you can get yourself a 14 Pro and pay several hundred more, or you can get this iPhone 13 Pro. Now we're gonna begin with the body and the build. Over my time using it, as I mentioned before, the you know build and body is about the same. And you know that's something that really makes me think, why not save money if I'm gonna be holding the same stainless steel, the same phone in my hand. So this one right here, in terms of the build and the body, still feels super premium and what i like about it is that you can get it for you know maybe around the 700 dollars range you can get this at the price of an iphone 14. kind of funny why would you get the other one when you could get this unless you just really got to have the latest phone or the latest deal on that phone so you should just definitely get this when it comes to the body and the build now when it comes to the display you're also going to get for the next, this one will still be pretty, you know, premium feeling, pretty up to date feeling for at least the next six to eight months, especially in terms of display. So it gets to a thousand nits of brightness and it's super smooth still. Now we've talked about that before, but one of the key areas where the iPhone 13 Pro still makes it worth your time right now is because the ProMotion not only is smooth, but it also helps with the battery life with the adaptive refresh. So this can actually adapt all the way up to 120 hertz and it goes all the way down to like one hertz. So depending on what you're doing, it does adapt. When you do turn on low power mode for 13 Pro, it does turn that off and you can get even more battery life out of this phone. But definitely display, huge deal. Super Retina XDR panel here. It does have a really nice HDR10 support, Dolby Vision, 1200 nits peak, I mean, this thing is really a boss in the performance. 460 pixels per inch, so slightly more than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And again, you're gonna pay less for this than you're gonna pay for, you know, say a iPhone 14 Pro. Actually, a few hundred dollars less, depending on where you look. Now, some people don't wanna get a secondhand phone, and for those people, you might wanna go get a new phone. But again, you're just getting a really nice panel here. I'm looking at some of the new S23s. Those are quite nice. They're quite smooth as well, but this is still awesome if you want an Apple device. Now, you're not gonna get Dynamic Island, so that's gonna feel a little bit antiquated here in the future. Not right now, this notch won't, but down the line, this is gonna be a phone that's gonna feel classic with this notch at some point. Kind of funny saying that now, but I think one day it will feel like that. You know, Apple kind of brings new features that make them feel newer and then the older phones feel older. That kind of happens. Software wise too, if you were to buy this right now, it's a sound investment because your software is gonna be supported for at least another four to five years. So buying this now, it's like if you skip this phone, you didn't really lose out because you can now save money, get it now and still have like several years of support. So. The truth is, is that nobody really has to buy an iPhone when it first comes out if you're looking to have it for a long time. If you're looking to be on the latest tech, you wanna enjoy what the latest tech on the market is, then I definitely consider, I think you should consider buying it when it first comes out. Now, performance too is also critical. I can't see a difference between this and the 14 Pro and actual real world use. And that's important to say because when I'm recommending to you guys what to buy, I don't wanna go ahead and say, just get this because of the CPU. And while the A15 Bionic chipset isn't the newest, the A16 is more powerful, it has a negative effect. The A16 consumes more power. The brighter display on the 14 Pro 
consumes more power. In fact, some people might actually like the colors on a 13 Pro more as well. So actually, I wouldn't be think it would be wrong if some people actually consider the 13 Pro over the 14 Pro. So definitely, you know, having the A16 is nice for the future, but it wasn't the leaps and bounds chip that we're probably going to see in the next version. So if you get this now, you're getting the same chip as the iPhone 14 and 14 Plus and better battery life consumption because it's not using a 2,000-nits 2000, 2000 display and it's not using, you know, more power consumption with that chipset that they put in here. So it's kind of a little bit of a rush chipset, but still very good on the A16, but the A15 is plenty enough, really top of the line CPU. Also, you can get this phone up to one terabyte as well. So if you're looking to get a one terabyte storage option on the iPhone storage, and you wanna save a little bit of money versus this, you can find a one terabyte iPhone 13 Pro for some 256 gig price iPhone 14 Pros, maybe even a little bit less depending on where you look. I mean, there's some deals out there, you just gotta be on the hunt. And if you're gonna get storage at that price, it's a better deal than this because you're getting much more storage, which means you can store much more on your phone. And both of these are capable of 4K 60. Also the cameras, I actually really like to recommend something about these. One of the things that it does is it doesn't over sharpen when you do take a photo on the 13 Pro. I mean, look at that result. It's just absolutely stunning. I really like the 13 Pro's camera. I, st I still think it's more of the traditional you know, iPhone style camera where you take the photo and it just looks amazing every time. These new ones are producing more bokeh and they're producing more background blur, which is kind of what we just said. I kind of just repeated myself, but they're just over sharpening over, uh, at the end of the photo. Like when you take it, it over sharpens and that's cool and all. It's more pro if you know what you're doing, but the iPhone 13 Pro is more the consumer camera. In my opinion, they both can go 15X. You will miss out on that video though, that GoPro-like video for the iPhone you know, 13 Pro, but you can still throw it in video mode, put it in the wide angle and still kind of get something similar if you want. It's just not gonna be quite as smooth. Cinematic on here is also pretty dope. And you just have a lot of pro features that are just, I would say more consumer friendly, a little bit easier. This one is getting a little more complex, a little bit more for the pro. And I think Apple's gonna stretch that to an ultra phone in the future, where it's gonna be more for those people who actually need those features or actually desire them or know how to use them or care about those pro features. The front facing camera in here also amazing still. I don't see any real major upgrades to this phone on the front facing camera. I'm not knocking the 14 Pro, love the 14 Pro. I just think it's kind of high price when you could just get yourself a 13 Pro right now and rock out with almost everything the same. So that's pretty uh, pretty good deal here on the iPhone 13 Pro. Also, the speakers are plenty loud on these. I do find the 14 Pros to get a little bit better than these, but you still have some nice touches on this phone, like really good battery life on the device. I can find myself getting the full day on this phone, and I'm not stretching into like two, three days like I would with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, 13 Pro Max, but if you're light on it, you may be able to do that. Now, the 6.1 inch size, though, is something that you might wanna consider if you want a bigger phone, but I do think the iPhone 13 mini, which launched alongside this phone last year, is a great option as well if you do wanna consider a smaller size before the mini line goes away. It's still an awesome pick right here. iPhone 13 Pro also does give you really solid resale value. So if you buy this phone now, at least for the next two to three years, you should be able to retain at least a good like 400 to 500 bucks on the resale, which is pretty good. You can use the phone. You're, you're probably gonna lose about 40% on the resale, but you're not gonna lose like 70 or 80 like you would on a competing Samsung device. Also, you gotta keep in mind, this is 5G compatible, so it's ready for the future, but it doesn't give you the long-term support when it comes to some of the connectivity things. Like we don't have 6E, we only have Wi-Fi 6 on here, Bluetooth 5.0, so not the latest standards there. And if Apple does improve anything when it comes to biometric security, Face ID will start to feel old. I don't see them doing much of a change there, but if they do start putting in display fingerprints or anything like that, or they kind of upgrade that system, this will feel dated in the future. But at the same time, there's really not much to worry about. Again, a 30, 30 95 milliamp hour battery, if you are hard on it, it's gonna go down a little bit faster than you say a, a Max device, probably will need to be replaced at some point. But I just think the iPhone 13 Pro is an awesome pick for you. 
to, and you should get one now before they start to you know age more and feel a little bit older and feel a little bit less like a good decision. I think now it's getting to the point where if you don't buy this like before March, you know, I think in the future it'll just be an older, nice, really nice used iPhone. But getting it now, you still have plenty of life left and it still feels very up to date. So thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. I have S23 content coming next week, so stay tuned for that. We will compare it to the 13 Pro, 14 Pro. Stay tuned. And let me know if you're going to get the iPhone 13 Pro this year or not. Thank you very much for watching. Nick here. Be sure to be well. I'll catch you guys all in the very next episode. And peace.